Hi, my name's Daniel. Welcome to the Amateur.net vlog. This episode is about the recently released Birmingham Sports Holdings accounts. Uh, what the key things to take away from them are, what they mean for Birmingham City and what they can tell us about the club's future. Now, before I begin, it's important to note I'm not an accountant. Uh, I only have a lay person's view of these accounts. So please don't take what I say as anything more than the limited knowledge of someone who's read them and taken a look at them and thinks they know what they mean. I've put a link in the description so you can read the accounts for yourself and make your own judgments. One other thing to make things a little bit easier, instead of talking about Hong Kong dollars and converting it all the time, I'm just gonna talk about pounds and I'm gonna use the rough conversion of 10 Hong Kong dollars to one pound. I think the actual value is 9.96 at the moment. So I have six key talking points about the accounts and rather than go through questions like I normally do, I'm just gonna rattle through these key points. So first point, once again, as expected, Birmingham Sports Holdings and Birmingham City Football Club for that matter have made a loss. The accounts show that Birmingham Sports Holdings have made a loss of around 26.65 million pounds, which is about 10 million less than last year's account. So that's, that's good. Of that 26.65 million, about 18.65 million is attributable to the football club. Now, it was inevitable that Blues were going to make it a loss last year, even with the sale of Che Adams, um, simply because the amount that the club spends is in excess of what it brought in. And that's without coronavirus um, rearing its ugly head. Second key talking point, um, on Monday, there were charges filed against Birmingham City Football Club at Company's House by an Australian bank in London called Macquarie Bank. And those charges outlined where uh, Birmingham City had sold future transfer instalments for the Che Adams transfer and from the Jude Bellingham transfer valued at £18 million pounds, um, to bring cash flow in now. Now, in the BSH accounts, we can actually see how much money Blue's got. They've got £17.312 million which means they've been charged around £688,000 uh, by Macquarie Bank to have this money up front. Now that might sound like a lot of money, but actually it's a little bit less than 4% and that compares favourably to the interest rates charged by Paul Shun, uh, which is about 5%, and other external third party lenders, about 8% that Birmingham Sports Holdings have had. So that decision looks to be really sensible. Now, talking about loans, Birmingham Sports Holdings have borrowed a lot of money. They're now shown as owing around 48.7 million, of which 48.2 million is due by next June. Now, that figure's significantly gone up from last year, which was around 21.45, and the figure given in the accounts of December, which was around 40. Most of the loan facilities that Birmingham Sports Holdings have are now maxed out, and that means that it's going to be difficult for them to borrow any more money from people in Hong Kong. Interestingly, there's another loan showing made uh, to the club by the Football League Limited, also known as the EFL. The EFL loaned the club £584,000, unsecured and interest-free. Uh, it's going to be paid back in six instalments, in which the first one is on the 1st of April next year. Now, I'm quite surprised about this because I would have thought with all the flack the EFL have taken for the, the, the shit show <laughs> that the Football League is at the moment, that they'd actually be, you know, saying, well, we have loan money, you know, we are doing our job. And it's good to see, especially as it's interest free. For those of you who are hoping that Birmingham Sports Holdings would spin off Birmingham City Football Club, well, unfortunately, your hopes are a little bit dashed once again. Birmingham City Football Club still makes up nearly 90% of the revenues Birmingham Sports Holdings takes in, and both the Cambodian Investment Project and the Lottery Services Project that BSH own also lost money in the last year. Now, on the plus side, BSH are receiving the full rental income that they, that they were expecting from Cambodia. The problem is the coronavirus outbreak means that their investments have actually lost value. There's also some mention in the accounts uh, in events after the accounts are finished uh, about Boeing Sports Holdings buying a Japanese healthcare company. This was announced to the public and shareholders back in July. Speaking as a shareholder, I'm a little bit concerned about how vague the details are of this acquisition. 
There's no details of who the Japanese healthcare company are or expected return on investment or anything like that. And I will be putting forward a question at the AGM that will be held to approve the accounts as to who they are. I suppose the big thing really is that the auditors have said that there are material concerns that BSH is a going concern. And to be honest, I'd expect them to have that opinion because BSH owes way more money than it has. So, you know, it's, a very technical def it's the very definition of not being a going concern. However, in the director's report, they say nothing to worry about. All I can imagine is that they're going to talk to their creditors, the people that they owe all that money to by the end of June next year, and say, oh, we need to hang on, you know, we can't pay you back yet, can you extend our line of credit? Hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Now, I think the directors have to be confident and cocky about this because if they weren't, well, They'd have the shareholders and regulators on their back saying, well, what the hell? So the most important thing here, what conclusions can we draw from these accounts? I think the big thing, first of all, is that BCFC need to find a way to bring in revenue if, as it looks like, credits can't go to the ground before March next year. Now, I know that they're streaming games at a tenner a pop and it's bringing in a small amount of revenue. But simple maths, um, say they sell 10,000 streams and I can't imagine they actually sell that many. A tenner of pop is 100k a game. Um, 10,000 season tickets, and I'm sure Blue sell more than that, uh, an average of I don't know, 250 quid is 2.5 million pounds. And then you've got the match day revenue and all the stuff that people buy at the ground, like drinks and food and programmers and all that jazz. It's a lot of money to be made up. So this means two things, as far as I can see. Now, the first thing it means is that recruitment has to continue to be shrewd. Uh, last summer, we saw Blue sign a lot of players who had resale value so that when they bought them, they would be able to sell them on for a bigger figure. And I think Blues need to keep doing that. Um, the last two seasons, they've been kept going by the sale of Che Adams, the sale of Jude Bellingham. So next year, maybe we've got to look at who else we can sell for big. I don't think it's an unreasonable thing for Blues to expect to be able to do either. A good season from Jeremy Bella, uh, Ivan Shunic, or I don't know. One of the new signings and one of the big fish might come along with a massive checkbook and say yeah how much you want that's got to be the aim the corollary of this though is that blues need to keep costs down and the biggest cost that any football club has is player wages so i mean take uh 20 grand a week for a player now most people think oh, that's an average championship wage no it's not that much but it actually that 20 grand a week equates to a million pounds a year five percent of our income now if we sign too many players for that sort of money it's not sustainable for any length of time in the championship unless someone can keep dumping money into the club and with so much money being borrowed by bsh i'm not entirely convinced that can continue for a length of time of course the panacea in all this will be promotion go up to the premier league and all these money worries would become peanuts and yeah things we would have different problems but promotion is really really hard to do and the big thing that football clubs have is this risk reward problem how much do they risk to try and get that reward and everyone is trying to get the same reward which makes it even harder if you've enjoyed this video please click the like button and please subscribe for more content about Birmingham City the owners and all the stuff around them thanks for watching um, till next time Keep right on.